We all need to understand governance in an emerging new world. That's the title of our project, and it summarizes it very well. The world is changing. It's emerging as a new world. And we have to learn how to govern, not only ourselves, but to help others as well. Because if others do well, that's good for us. The demography of the world is changing very deeply. The developed countries all have falling fertility and rising longevity. So the age structure of the populations is to being turned almost upside down. In the process, you find Russia, Germany, Japan, China, losing working age population and population generally. That's a big deal. It's interesting that the three countries which still have the fertility longevity issues but are not losing populations are Canada, Australia, and the United States. What do these countries have in common? They're all countries built by immigrants and continue to have an immigration flow. And that flow has brought the best and brightest to our country and replenished our labor force. Is it going to continue? You have artificial intelligence. That's been getting lots of attention lately. But also there's 3D printing, which is a form of manufacturing. More and more we'll be able to produce the things we want close to where we are. Deglobalization, hello. And we also have the threat of very lethal, inexpensive weaponry, large-scale drones, heavily armed, that can pose a real problem. And we have to think about it carefully. Effective government is always really important. And we've had experimentation over the years. Our founding fathers were brilliant in how they conceived the United States. But right now, government is more and more difficult because there's information out there, some of it accurate, some of it not accurate. People can all know what's happening and they can communicate and organize and they do. So having government effective is hard and you're governing over diversity. You've got to learn how to recognize the diversity and make it comfortable under some overall heading. So the problems of government are difficult, just as the problems that they have to deal with are greater. As this project unfolds, among other things, we want to look at the effects of all this on key countries like Russia, China, the Latin American, ourselves, of course, Europe. And how, what's the differential effect? And how are we likely to see things unfold in these countries for good and bad. I, m I might say, I think there'll be a moment in time when some country, perhaps the United States, takes a deep breath and describes the world and says, we better get together and do something about it. Maybe it can be a cohesive force at some point. I'm always an optimist about the United States and I'm an optimist about our ability to cope with these problems. We have a tradition of immigration that helps us with the demography. We have long been a leader in innovations and how to handle them. We certainly can get it. We've been a leader in higher education for a long time, and there's no reason why we can't pep up our K through 12 education. And of course, Direct vocational training through community colleges is something we can do. So I think if we keep our act together and work on this, the United States will be able to do a good job of taking advantage of the positives that are involved in this and dealing with the negatives. We have a project here at Hoover designed to study all these trends, understand them better, 
and learn how to deal with them effectively. We've broken the subject down into parts and organizing a whole series of, I hope and think will be really interesting discussions. And then we'll try to put it all together in a bundle that says, here are some insights on how to deal with this new set of opportunities and challenges. Yeah.